I'm getting ready to leave Bakarava for Tahanea. I'm going a little bit before the incoming tide is done coming in, but I wanted to hit it before it got too dark. I won't be able to see through the water, but at least I can see the current. I'm off, just going in idle forward slowly towards the pass. Um, I had kicked up the engine a little bit. Um, coming into the pass, there still should be some incoming tide against me. Uh, as we know, my engine is very small. So I really hope that I can get out <laughs> while there's still daylight. So far, so good. You know what? I think there's outgoing current right now because I'm going, well, I don't know, 3.8 knots, which is impossible with just the sails that I have up. I don't know what's happening. Um, here's the pass. Maybe you can see the blinky red lights. Those are the channel markers. Here it's red, left, leave. Wait, no, it's not red, right, return. It's red, right, leave. Green, left, leave, wait. Red, right, return is in the States. When you're coming back, red is on the right. So here, when you're coming back, red is on the left, which means when you're leaving, red is on the right. Red is on the right, green on the left. Okay, <laughs> glad we got that sorted out. Phew. It's a trip being me sometimes, I tell you. 3.7 knots, um, all right, I might have some outgoing tide, which is awesome. And there's still a little bit of daylight left, so far so good, knock on wood. Um, we will see. Welcome to Wintipi Sailing. I'm single-handing my Grind 27 around the world. I started my trip in Maine with a very cold 10-month overhaul of my entire boat. Solo sailed through the Caribbean, the Panama Canal, and 41 days alone across the Pacific. I've been cruising in French Polynesia for the last year and a half, kiting, spearfishing, freediving, and of course fixing all the things that break on my boat. Aboard the Gek, I have no fridge, water maker, fancy electronics, and my rowboat is a dinghy with a sail rig. If you're interested in seeing my daily life, check out my Instagram, at Boat Lizard. Okay, enjoy the episode. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Now that we've established, red is on the right, I'm much more comfortable entering this pass. It's gorgeous, the wind is light and beautiful, the pass is flat and smooth. I think this is going to shape up to be a really gorgeous night, and I'm sort of exiting the pass as the light is disappearing, so I think it's all going to be perfect timing. Alright, I just got underway again. I'm trying to light my face up with the iPad so you can see me going three and a half knots or a little more but uh, once I get away from the outfall the waves should smooth out and I might make some more speed. All right it's time to see how much water is in my build. Whoa that just went in my eyes. Um, so I did have to motor at the pass which means that there might be a little more than I want in here. As I'm sure you guys recall from my previous videos, I need to replace the stuffing box on my engine. Right now it leaks like a sieve, literally. So I am trying to not use my engine ever. I'm sailing on and off the anchor a lot, but sometimes like in passes I have to use the engine. And then I take on a lot of water in the build, so that's what I'm cleaning up right now. Alright, that wasn't actually too bad of an amount of water, but I do not believe that that's all that's there. I'm gonna make my bed. Uh, one of the problems with not having leak cloths is that I'm gonna have to tack my bed tonight as I tack, but I'm starting on a port tack, so bed starts on the starboard. It's a really beautiful night, so I'm gonna sit outside, listen to some music, and enjoy the stars for a little bit. Um, just get my head back into being at sea again. Right, this is my route. So here is Hakarada. And then Faite is this guy, and Tahane is this guy, and the pass I'm going to be going in is this one, I think. Um, oh shit, I forget. Yeah, it's one of these two. Anyway, I've kind of mapped out the approximate tack angles. As you can see right now, I'm not quite making it. Um, and so I have um, two-ish hours until my next tack, so I don't run into Faite. And then hopefully this should be a nice long tack for most of the night, just to get over to Hanea. And as of now, I'm going to get in around noon, but you know, that number might change. I know that I've told you guys this trick for Navionics a couple years ago in an old episode, but 
if you want to have night mode for Navionics, you invert the colors and everything becomes dark. But I just discovered this really cool shortcut on my iPad, and so I just got a newish, a newer one. I had the oldest generation iPad that had a GPS chip in it before, and now I just bought the next oldest one uh, as a backup. But you can actually set a shortcut where if you triple click the home button, it inverts the colors which is really handy. Um, it's an accessibility shortcut, and then it makes it super easy to switch to night mode when you're at night, which is just color inversion. So hopefully this trick helps you. Oh, you can see the moon. That's cool. It's just a little guy tonight. And also the uh, compass light. I don't know if you can see. The lights of the next atoll are on the horizon. Um, I can see the blinking channel lights and then some lights from the town. But I still have a ways to go before I tuck. I'm gonna be about, uh, where's the button? 30, 30, wow, I'm tired, three miles. Uh, I'll tack when I'm three miles off of this guy. So I have another half hour. I'm just staying awake until the tack, and then it's a big one up. Um, so I'll probably start my naps on this guy and then go down there. It's 4.30 in the morning. I just tacked for the fourth time. I think I'm finally gonna clear fire tank. Oh, I have about four hours on this tap. Um, and then I have to talk again. So I'm here. And this is what I have been doing all night. It's just terrible, terrible tack angles. It's so hard to go east with the current against you. The tack angles are really bad and with light wind, um, you don't have enough speed to fight the current. But anyway, uh, this is fire tank. And we're still on air. So hopefully, once I do this, I just have one more V. Let them in. Alright, I'm gonna go back to sleep. It's a gorgeous day out here, so flat and gentle, beautiful, beautiful night. There was one tiny squall that just rained for about three minutes and that was it. Uh, because there's current, I'm trying to go east against the trades and the wind is light, I'm making terrible, terrible pack angles. Um, and it might take me an extra 12 hours because my, yeah, I'll show you. Kind of doing this. <laughs> Not even. So, yeah, I mean, this is terrible because that's where I came down and now I'm basically just retracing my steps. Uh, it's not great, but I'm really happy to be out here and I'll fiddle with my course in a second. Light wind is tricky. Okay, end of day one out here. The sun is setting. It's been a really chill day. It's been a while since I've had such a nice night like this out at sea. I feel like recently my sea adventures have been really rough and head to wind. Right now I am beating into the wind, but it's slight and nice. I did wait um, a long time for this weather window, but it's worth it. <laughs> Ready for bed. Um, I just fell asleep in the cockpit. I just put on my AIS alarm. I'll show you guys how I do it. I have AIS receive built into the VHF 
and I just go to CPA alarm and then here I can select the alarm limit. So I like to pick five nautical miles. That means if a ship comes within five nautical miles of me, the alarm goes off. It wakes me up and I can make sure we don't hit. These are the alarms that I set for the night. So I actually turn on an alarm every 40 minutes. I set a separate alarm. alarm because I'm really good at turning off my alarms in my sleep, going back to sleep, and not waking up again. When I started my Pacific Crossing, I was just setting the alarm every 40 minutes. I would go off and I'd reset it. Then I had a couple nights where I wasn't really stressed about weather, where I would just turn off the alarm and go back to sleep and wake up a couple hours later feeling really refreshed and then was like, oh shit, how long have I been asleep? So I've started creating each individual alarm so that even if I do sleep through one, I know the next one will go off. Uh, especially when I'm around the atolls. But anyway, right now, on this tack, I'm far from land on all sides, so I'm not really that worried. It's good conditions, not from wood. Everything should be good. I've been lying down for 10 minutes less, and the wind just shifted. And now I am way off course, so I'm gonna have to go up on deck and fiddle with the wind vane. Okay, back on course. One of the challenges with the wind vane is that, um, well, with mine anyways, that it's adjusted to the intensity of the wind. So if the wind drops off, it means I need to adjust the position of the lines on the tiller because I am adjusting for weather helm or lee helm. So what happened was that it got windier for about half an hour and I had to put more weather helm adjustment on the tiller and then the wind dropped and then suddenly I was way downwind of where I should have been. So I just fixed that and I'm going to try to go back to sleep. It's 5 in the morning. I just put up my head sail. And I'm heading towards Talia. Here we are. Last five and a half miles. I should get in around 6.30, which is still early for slack tide, but I'm gonna try for it anyway, see what happens. Take another mini nap, not quite ready to be awake yet. And then uh, get ready to go in for the pass. <laughs> so there are two viable passes in Tuao, and as is the case with any atoll I've encountered where there are two passes that are close together, everyone tells you something different. So the latest that I've heard is that this pass is better to enter but the thing is i'm going to be entering on incoming tide and it could be stronger than my engine and this pass has this at the end of it whereas this pass has a clear shot in so if i get caught up in the current it's just going to spit me out and i'll be fine so i think i'm going to go for this pass because i'm remembering when i went into apataki i was coming in at 10 knots and probably got shot to the equivalent of about here with no way of controlling my boat because I was just caught up in the stream. So I don't really want to do that in this one. This pass does look wider and it's definitely deeper too, but I think I'll have better luck here. Hopefully uh, not bad current, but we'll see. Looks a little... Uh Looks fine. Maybe some waves. Um, sorry, I was looking at my Navionics. It should still be incoming current. Either Slack is at 9 or 10, or maybe neither. It's always hard to tell with these things. So I'm just going to go for it. Um, I'm just getting lined up with the pass right now so I can come in perpendicular. I'll turn my engine on and I'll have my jib ready to rise if I need it, but chances are I'm just gonna get kind of spit out into the lagoon and I've checked it's a clear run as far as the current will take me so I don't have to worry about getting pushed into a bomb like the other pass although it's probably gonna be a rough rider pass but <clears throat> it's all right I'm just an idle forward with the engine I don't want to overtax my engine um, because of the leak problem so if I need to I can throttle up but I'm hoping that I can just zoom right in here you can see the current on the water is getting pretty crazy. And if you look at the depth, it's shot up to 60 feet. There's the bomby there that I'm going to avoid, <laughs> hopefully. And pretty ripping current, but nothing too terrible. You can definitely see the bottom. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, I'm in the past, still in a lot of current, going 5.3 knots. 
Uh, never had to take the engine out of idle forward. It was just kind of there as a safety. And here's the anchorage. There are three boats besides Eve here, but it looks like there's a lot of space, so I'm not worried about that. I'm just gonna keep going until I get around this corner because um, there's some coral that sticks out and then I'll start heading towards the anchorage hopefully get out of the current. I'm kind of going sideways here as I'm trying to get out of the current but it's sort of like drifting in the snow with your car. <laughs> it's a little fun. I've arrived in Tanea, which is a destination I've been trying to get to for so long and there's so many sharks in the water. Maybe you can see them through the water is super clear. Um, they're attracted to the clinking of the anchor chain. So whenever you up or down anchor in a place with a lot of sharks, a lot of them come. I'm going to jump in the water to check my chain as soon as I finish putting away my sails. Okay, first I'm going to check my chain and then I'm going to tie another fender on to the chain so I can let more scope out because there's a ton of bombies here. That is Just swimming the length of my chain, checking to see that everything's cool, and it looks like the chain's a bit wrapped around rock and the anchor's not set, so super easy. It's not very deep here, about 30 feet. I just reset the anchor by hand, squished it into the sand, and moved the chain to the other side of the coral, so everything looks good now, and this is just one of those places where I'll probably need to dive the chain every day just because there's a lot of rocks for it to get hung up on, but it's gorgeous, so I don't mind. Never on, um, and now it's time for that coffee. <laughs> so I'm like a stovetop espresso maker bitch now. Seriously, this buddy is my life. Another thing that I've been getting super into as of late is putting ginger in my coffee. What am I reading right now? Okay, <laughs> so all of my reading now I get from these uh, book swaps and things I trade with other sailors, so it's not always stuff that I would necessarily pick out for myself. But this is called Stiff, and it's a book about what uh, people do with corpses. It, this is a really disturbing book to read over breakfast because it just puts me right off my food. So I've been having difficulty getting through it because I love reading while I eat. Um, but this book is just impossible to, to do this. And now I think it's nap time. Thanks for watching this week's video. I put out new videos every two weeks on Mondays. And for my patrons, you guys get a special snack on the weeks that I don't put out full-length YouTube. Thank you so much to all of my patrons who are supporting me and making this trip possible. If you'd like to become a patron, my Patreon is patreon.com slash And for one-time donations, I have a PayPal that's paypal.me slash Thank you guys for all your lovely comments. I like reading them whenever I have an internet connection. And thank you, Tish, for helping me get these videos scheduled up on YouTube. She's my sure support lady. Couldn't do it without you. The anchorage where I'm in right now, editing this video, is insanely rolly, and I'm actually getting kind of queasy. Um, I've spent the last two or three hours editing, and I think I need to go ashore. So without further ado, I'm sorry if I forgot anything. Peace out! <laughs>